Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. Beautiful sunny day here in Colorado. A um, little breezy, but I can't complain. All right, anyway, let's get into this message. Uh, in today's video, uh, I'm going to ask a very controversial question. Was Jesus MGTOW? Whoa! <laughs> Was Jesus MGTOW? It's a controversial question because many pastors are against <laughs> many pastors are against uh, MGTOW because they think you know it's a movement that promotes hatred for women, having sex with multiple um, women out of wedlock, um, just in general living a sinful lifestyle uh, that involves uh, sex, drugs, and alcohol, um, you know things like that. So to answer the question was Jesus a MGTOW, you know, first I kind of have to define what is MGTOW, right? Obviously, it's an acronym short for men going their own way. Um, I'm not here to explain everything about it. That's not the point of this video. But the first thing I want to mention, though, is this. It's, first of all, it's, it's not a movement. It's not a movement. It's considered a philosophy. You know, many people falsely call it a movement when in actuality it's a philosophy, meaning you know, MGTOW is not trying to move anywhere. It's not that trying. It's not a. It's, it's not trying to. Um, it's not a political group. It's not advocating for any political change. Um, there's not a central leader uh, um, of an organization. Uh, there's not an organization uh, that you can like donate to or or become a member of. It's just. It's just a philosophy, right? Um, and it's a philosophy mainly for men. Um, but many of the principles can be understood and obviously used by women for sure, you know. Um, but mainly it's just a set of basic truths, a set of basic observations, if you will, that deals with men, women, relationships, and society at large, right? So with a big emphasis, though, I will say this, a big emphasis focused on trying to protect um, modern men, especially younger men, but, uh, but all men in general. Um, from the pitfalls of modern relationships and marriage. In a nutshell, that's what MGTOW is. Okay, that being said, one of the main pillars of MGTOW is to not let a woman rule over you. You know, where MGTOW is, is, to, is to say that it's kind of a philosophy that says, hey, you know, modern, modern um, relationships and have kind of uh, adapted or evolved, whatever you want to call it, um, where the men kind of worship the women or society bends over backwards for the women. You know, I know just recently I saw um, a, a game where they remade the Monopoly game called Ms. Monopoly, where now women, uh, uh, every time they pass go, they make $240 instead of, and men only make 200 the normal 200 I mean, it's basically things like that where, you know, women get the, get in, are getting the edge in society. Um, so, you know, the main, one of the main pillars is, you know, do not let women rule over you. Um, and, you know, this is not a new idea. It's not a new thought. It, you know, it, it dates back as far as we know, you know. Um, you know, for centuries, you know, uh, kings have been ruling empires. Uh, men are always, have always been considered, you know, the head of the household. Uh, men have basically been in charge uh, throughout history. And, you know, with feminism and, you know, the way things are, uh, the modern way things are is women are getting empowered to, to, to kind of take on roles that have traditionally been masculine, have traditionally been men, right? Like, um, you know, we're, we're seeking to do uh, female presidents and female congresswomen and, you know, female managers and CEOs and, you know, I can go on and on. But um, basically, uh, what I'm here today is to tell you, you know, obviously the Bible, you know, was Jesus MGTOW, the, and Jesus, Jesus is obviously in the Bible, he read the Bible, he preaches the Bible, he's, the Bible and Jesus go hand in hand, so the Bible promotes male leadership in the church, you know, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 34, which reads, let your women keep silence in the churches, let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience you know and there's many verses like this in the bible that says you know a woman's command to uh, uh, submit to her husband obey her husband 
um, things like this. Well, Jesus is also recorded in uh, the Gospel according to St. John of rebuking his own mother, right? Um, John chapter 2 says, and when they, and they, you know, before Jesus turned water into wine, the first miracle, anyway, John chapter 2 verse 3 says, and when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, they have no wine. And Jesus said unto her, oh, this, <laughs> sorry, there's bugs over here bugging me. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, and Jesus said unto her, uh, John chapter 2 verse 4, woman, what have I to do with thee? You know, mine hour is not yet come. You know, Jesus is kind of rebuking his mother, you know. And, and there's other uh, there's other points in the Bible, you know, which I won't mention uh, right now in this video, that where Jesus rebukes his own mother, you know. And in our society, you know, like I said, it kind of promotes, you know, female worship, female empowerment, where, you know, you don't talk back to women, you know, you, you don't, um, uh, things like that. Um, you know, with feminism, you know, society rejects these teachings of the Bible of like where men are the head of the household, men are in charge, you know. It says that women are equal to men, uh, women can be in positions of power, you know, the Bible's totally against that. Um, so on this point, um, I would have to say that, you know, on this, at least on this point, Jesus, to me, seems to be MGTOW, right? Um, Jesus falls more in line with the MGTOW belief where, you know, women aren't in charge, men are the head of the household type of thing. Um, another big point that MGTOW is, um, that talks about is obviously men going their own way. You know, in other words, don't let society tell you what to do, right? Don't let them shame you into doing something that you don't believe in. Um, specifically, um, marriage, right? Society tends to put a stigma on single men, especially older single men. Um, it kind of lifts up married men as, as if they're superior in some way. Um, I remember the church that I used to go to uh, uh, taught that, you know, you were more qualified somehow to preach the gospel if you were married with kids. Um, and it's like, well, you know, Jesus wasn't married. He didn't have any kids. Uh, you're more qualified than Jesus. How does that work out? Um, and a lot of the scriptures that they teach out of the Bible in the New Testament were written by the Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul wasn't married. He didn't have any kids as far as we know. So, you know, um, there's, there's that. And then you see, you know, Jesus was against the order of society of his day, right? All the powerful leaders in the synagogues, the high priests, the Pharisees, the scribes, you know, uh, all throughout the New Testament recorded in the Gospels, Jesus rebuking them. He says, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, ye hypocrites, right? So Jesus eventually got crucified for going against the established order. Um, Jesus told them that they were what they were preaching was wrong. In other words, he was like going like a fish upstream, right? He was trying to swim upstream, so to speak. He was kind of going his own way. He, was, he wasn't sticking with the mainstream. You see, in feminism, which teaches equality, um, if you have a different opinion in the mainstream, you're considered hate speech. You're, you're censored, you know. So on this point, I'd have to say Jesus, again, lines up more with the MGTOW philosophy. Um, he went his own way, uh, he, and he taught what he thought was best. You know, he, he didn't go with the mainstream. He took a hard turn and changed directions, and he um, kind of went his own way. So I believe Jesus could be considered MGTOW in this sense. Um, and also another sense, the thing to consider is he wasn't married. Um, in fact, he never had any relationship with a, with a woman of any kind because, you know, MGTOW teaches that, you know, women in general, because of how hypergamy are, are generally after your money. You know, the, the, the richer man will tend to get the, um, the more women, right? It's pretty obvious. Um, and as we know, Jesus was poor. He was a virgin. And I'm sure, you know, society made fun of him. I'm sure... Um, people spoke behind his back. Well, he can't get a woman, no, except for those whores like Mary Magdalene, right? And, uh, and these are these are arguments used to shame him even to this day, right? Where you know, I would uh, disagree that Jesus was MGTOW on, on this point because uh, many MGTOW do teach that it's okay to pump and dump women. You know, just just shack up with a woman, go to bed with her, don't get married, sleep around as much as you want. Go ahead and lie to them, use them, abuse them, and, and throw them away. Um, and and uh, but Jesus, you know, he didn't he didn't preach that. Even to the whores, he didn't preach 
to treat the whores like that. And, and Jesus said, if, if, um, if any man even so much as looketh upon a woman with lust in his heart, you've already committed adultery with her in your heart, right? So, and adultery was a cap, is a capital crime, according to the, uh, the Bible. You know, it's punishable by death. Um, so we know that, you know, Jesus didn't do that, you know. So one might argue that Jesus was not MGTOW, you know. But, you know, me, I'm a part of a smaller group of MGTOW. Um, we identify as uh, Christian MGTOW. Uh, it's a little smaller sector um, of, of, of men, you know, who don't believe in pumping and dumping. Or at least I don't, you know, I don't speak for everybody. Like I said, it's not a movement, it's a philosophy. Um, but, you know, I follow the teachings of Jesus, you know, and when Jesus said, don't look, don't look after a woman with lust in your heart, well, okay, I won't do that. Um, you know, but, you know, I've been deceived by the devil. I'm not sitting up here today on my high horse, you know, saying that I've never fell into the sin of pornog pornography and fell into the wicked sin of fornication. You know, I've done that thing um, before. And, but since then, you know, I've confessed those sins. Um, I've turned away from those sins 100% completely. Um, and, you know, now I preach against those sins because I know from my, my experience, my bad experience, you know, that, that uh, th those, those things lead to death. You know, those things um, will just bring conflict in your life, uh, bring you shame, remorse, and all this other stuff. So, you know, I follow Jesus nowadays, and I don't even look at a woman with lust. You know, I see women dressed like whores, like there's one right over there. Um, <laughs> uh you know, because that's normal nowadays. Nowadays, it's normal for just all women to dress like whores. Even you dress the little kids, the little girls up, uh, you know, first graders, second graders, just dress them up like whores. You know, what's the difference, right? Um, but, you know, today I can honestly say, you know, I don't, I don't lust after women. I don't lust after these whores anymore. You know, I, I, and I have peace in my heart because of it. You know, that's why I can preach for other men to do the same, you know, because I, I'm content. I'm more content. I can tell you I've done, I've done that way. Now I'm doing it this other way, and I'm telling you, I'm more content in my heart by doing it uh, the way Jesus taught. You know, and I don't have a wife, I don't have kids, you know, but, but, but what I do have is I do have the Holy Spirit inside of me, you know, because I obey God and I follow His commandments, you know, and I have friends and I have family um, and I have fellow church members who do the same, and, you know, we get along, we get along great, we support each other, we love each other, so, um, you know, a lot of MGTOWs say, oh, I'll never get married, you know, I would argue there's a difference between biblical marriage and, and um, the new feminist, uh, modern, gynocentric marriage, whatever you want to call it, of today, the wicked version of marriage. Um, but, you know, I'm not opposed to get married, you know. As I've said on my channel here before, you know, um, my ex, uh, if she were ever to turn, turn to the Lord and, and submit to Him and, and, and get saved and, and invite the Holy Spirit into her heart, you know, She'd come back, you know, I'd be happy to have her back, you know, we could serve the Lord together. <laughs> It'd be great, you know, the more the merrier. Um, but, you know, I'm not going to force her, you know, if she wants to go out there and serve the devil, and, and uh, that's her free will choice, you know, I respect her choice, <laughs> her body, her choice to, to go against God, to sin against God. Um, but if, if, if that's your choice, um, then I have the choice to uh, not welcome you into my home, right? Not welcome you with open arms. Um, anyway, like the Bible says, as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. I think that's in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Uh, not entirely sure. But um, so, you know, I'll always be here for her. But uh, anyway, I don't, don't want to get off on that tangent. Back to my topic. Um, my topic uh, was Jesus of MGTOW. You know, yeah, I think he was, you know, because, you know, Jesus never gives up on us, right? That's why he came and died for us, right? And, and when we sin... He just wants us to get it right. He wants to confess our sins and get things right, turn away from those sins and come back to Him, apologize to Him, say, I'm sorry. You know, that's why I try to live like Jesus, you know. If, if, if the woman that you love, like, like you know, the woman I love, if she wants to leave you, go out there and, and quote, unquote, have her fun, you know, and enjoy her youth or whatever, you know, a.k.a. destroy her youth. Um, you know, that's her free will. Like I said, you know, I'm not going to, I'm going to discourage her as much as I can to do that and try to warn her not to do that. But you know what? That's her choice. And, and if men want to do the same, you want to go out there and go against God and lust after all these women, pump and dump them. Um, hey, that's your choice. I'm going to discourage you guys to do that because it's not going to be good for you. But hey, that's your choice. And just like me, eventually you're going to run into a brick wall. You're going to hit a brick wall, you know, and, and the MGTOW always talk about women hitting the wall, right? You know, and, and there's there's two types of people, you know, because everybody can hit the wall at some point, even if 
even if you go all the way until you're dead, eventually you're gonna hit that wall of death. But anyway, you know, some people hit the wall and they regret what they did and they change and they seek to help others to not make the same mistakes, right? You know, that's what happened to me. It took me some time, like, like really to get right with God and truly be sorry into my heart for what I did and to, and to actually change my ways and live um, a righteous life. And um, I, even to this day, after changing my ways and, and, and getting clean and getting right, getting pure, you know, I still have that guilt for what I've done in the past, right? But, but the reason that I have peace in my heart, you know, the reason that I have peace and I, uh, is because I stopped living sinful, you know, and that's what gives me a clean, clear conscience now. But, you know, other people, there's a second type of person who, when they hit the wall, they refuse to admit they did anything wrong. They blame others. Um, you know, I know my ex, she still blames me, you know. And, and I'm like, yeah, okay, I, you know, I apologized. I forgave you. I moved on. I learned from my mistakes. I became better. Um, you're holding on to a grudge. Okay, that's what you want to do. You see, God doesn't hold a grudge, you know. When you truly go to God and say, hey, God, I'm sorry. I'm going to change, you know. What does God say? Psalms chapter 103 verse 12 says, As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Right? Um, 1 John chapter 5 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see, God forgives us. You know, and the godly thing for us to do towards others um, is to forgive them too. You know, let them change, let them let them uh, repent and do the right thing. You know, could could you imagine if God held a grudge against us? You know, and said, "Oh no, you blew it, buddy. You know, you're going to hell." <laughs> um, and then you're like, well, "Well, God, I'm sorry. You know, uh, I'm sorry. I changed my ways. I don't want to do it again." And God's like, "I don't care. Go to hell." Right? Like. Um, uh, consider this, you know, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, Judge not, lest ye be judged. For with what judgment ye judge, uh, ye shall be judged. Okay, so Jesus is saying, hey, look, how you treat others, that's how God is going to treat you, right? See, if you can't forgive other people and give them a second chance, then guess what? God's not going to give you a second chance, right? Matthew chapter 18, again, Jesus says, because um, uh, um, his, 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 his apostle Peter came to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Seven times? And Jesus said unto him, no, no, no. I say unto you, not until seven times, but until 70 times seven times, Peter, right? He's saying, you should, he's basically saying, forgive infinity, right? Forgive infinity because that's how God forgives you. When you go to God, he's going to forgive you, right? Um, Jesus uh, said, Whatsoever you would that men should do unto you, do ye even so unto them. Right? Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. You know, basically, basically Jesus is saying, Hey, how you treat other people, that's how um, you're going to be treated by God. Right? So, in closing, what can I say? You know, was Jesus a MGTOW? Um, well, I think so. You know, that's why I tag my videos with MGTOW, right? Um, but, you know, I obviously, disclaimer there, you know, uh, I understand that there's some ideas in the MGTOW philosophy that don't line up with the Bible. That's why I, I consider myself Christian MGTOW. So you just have to make a decision, guys, at the end of the day, you know. Do you want to go your own way and, and just free ball it and do whatever you want? You know, because that's what the girls seem to be doing, right? They're just doing whatever they want to do and we're, and we're saying, hey, we don't like what you're doing, right? Um, or do you want to go... Uh, the Christian way. Do you want to follow Jesus? Do you want to do what Jesus did? You know, do you respect Jesus? Um, but but I got to warn you guys. You know, you you start following Jesus, you start doing things the Christian way. Yeah, it, it, there's a lot of glory in that. But at the end of the day, it's not an easy lifestyle. You know, it's it's the hard road. You know, it's it's you'll have a clear conscience. Yeah, I have a clear conscience, pure heart. Um, Preaching the truth, preaching God's word. It's great. It's what you should do. It's what you ought to do. Um, but it also gets it, it gets me hated, right? People are going to downvote this video. They're going to hate this video. Um, I'm not going to be popular. I'm not going to be famous. I'm, I'm definitely not going to be rich. Um, you know, so just know that going into it, that these things are going to happen. You know, Jesus said, um, all who live, in, uh, live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution, right? So... Um, if, if you think you're having a tough time going MGTOW, um, trying to get women, uh, 
just try going Christian MGTOW. Try following Jesus. Uh, you better learn real quick how to f obey that first commandment and love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind because He's the only one who's going to be around. He's the only one who's going to stick with you, so you better love that. You better love uh, just having the Lord and having that clean conscience and be content with that. Um, it's all the fame and all the richness. <laughs> Uh, uh, probably not. Um, anyway, the Bible says, uh, who could find a virtuous woman? For her price is far uh, beyond rubies, you know? There's no, the Christian women out here are scarce, guys. They're really scarce. Because um, even though the righteous way is, is, a, is a tougher, less traveled way, you know, I hope and I encourage you guys to follow that path. You know, follow the straight and narrow path that Jesus followed. You know, it's, 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 it's going to be more difficult, but in the end, it's more rewarding. You know, and you're not going to get the glory in it in this lifetime. But in the end, in the kingdom to come, in the next lifetime, you're going to be rewarded. You're going to have a crown of life. Um, and, and you can walk to Jesus, walk up to Jesus with your head held high and say, and you know what Jesus is going to say? He's going to say, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. And that's going to be a great feeling. Anyways, uh, that's my message, guys. God bless you guys. And until next time, I'm going to give uh, God the last word, of course, as usual. But this has been Sean Elvis signing out. Adios. Uh, the Bible reads in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the living at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things. Endure affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. Make proof of thy ministry, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give to me at the last day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Amen. God bless.